podcast is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network. 61 14, 34 13, 31 20, and 44 21. That was a pretty shit week you get a weekend there, boys, but um, there we go. That's Welsh rugby for you. Nobody's allowed to complain about how much a WRU give us. Let's start the show. Welcome to the Rap Podcast, the place to catch up on all the regional and national rugby in Wales. You can find us on all the usual social media platforms and message us through there if you want, or you can email us on welshregionalrugbypod at gmail.com. So all the boring stuff out of the way, let's talk rugby. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Rap Podcast with me, Lee G. Joining me as always, full crew, Jamie, Harley and... The return of the grift. Okay, yeah, you can tell James is back. He's not got any panda eyes or nothing. How are we, gentlemen? Well, let's start with the new dad, I think. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I, yeah, back to work on Friday. Um, and then back up with the little one on Saturday and back to work this week now. Um, yeah, I'm feeling good, boys. It's... Uh, it's been a, been a long couple of weeks, obviously, but uh, I'm feeling good. Welcome yeah, that, back. That wears off, mate. That feeling good bit just kind of wears you down over 18 years and you get to 18 and they go, I'm off to university and you go, I'm fucked for that. And then they're gone. But and then my they... partner did say, are you going to record? Like, are you going to take another week off? You know, the first week back at work. And I said, no, I listened to last week's pod. It was fucking shambles, so. There's, there's no every time I'm gone. There's no decorum. There's no you know sense of uh, camaraderie. No balance. So it's like, you know, as I need to get back. The boys are desperate. Which is yeah. hilarious because it's the opposite on the on the WhatsApp group. You're the one who causes all the problems. And yeah. Strangely <laughs> enough, last week's figures went through the roof, mate. So I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one turns up for the Ospreys, do they? Yeah, but to be fair, I won here last week either. So uh, I reckon it was Big M. It was it was Big M last week. It was his his key celebrity game. appearance. Yeah, <laughs> the community <laughs> game of following him. He, I tell you what, he's he's in uh, he's on holiday this week. Yeah, and I couldn't remember which week he was on holiday. So I I sent him a message. I said, "Are you on holiday?" And he sent me a photo of himself sitting in the sun with his budgie smugglers on. And it's, oh god! Oh, it's it's burnt That's a an image. For oh, it's, <laughs> even as I'm saying it now, there's an image in my head that just won't leave me, and this cheesy grin and the big beard, and then Martin. But I love the guy. But there are some images you just don't need to see. So only uh, Martin would time his holiday at the end of the community game. <laughs> yeah, it was all sewn up by then, mate. It was all sewn up. Let's do drink of the week then, boys. So uh let, let's see how the last couple of weeks have affected you, James. What what have you got, mate? Uh I have gone for a Northern Monk. Uh it's by Northern Monk, which I believe is a Danish um company, I think it is. It is called Transient and it is seven percent hazy DDH APA. Uh, what I'm more concerned about is not the wanky bollocks and stuff like that. That's fine. It's the clearly it's a Stella can with the sticker, like the they just put the sticker on it. Because I thought it was just printed on, but it's not a sticker, so it's clearly a Stella can. Um, so the wanky bollocks we've got uh, get lost in haze, a blazing hazy APA that will take your taste buds on the ultimate trip. Craft brewed with northern pride and packed with ripe, juicy flavours, always fresh from the north. Um, I haven't had a sip of it yet, so I'm going to have a sip of it now. So, did did you do a traditional... Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. That's, not... That's a 7% uh... kicking in. <laughs> Are you sure it's not one of those sour things that Jamie likes? No, it's, it's all right. It just wasn't what I expected it to taste like. Did you um did you wet the baby's head properly? No, we haven't seen anyone um at all. Like I literally so we got messed around with the date for um my partner's C section quite a bit. So 
I was I was under the original impression that I was going to be able to go to my rugby awards evening. Um, but they moved it to the day uh, day after. Uh, sorry, the birth was the day before. So we got home on the Friday. He was born on the Thursday. And then about half an hour later, I said, right, the baby's asleep. I'm going to FaceTime into the uh, rugby awards. Uh, and so we haven't had a proper wet the baby's head yet. So um, I believe we're doing something soon. And I'm, I'm back in Wales in two weeks' time. I'm not over half term bringing the baby down. So I'll, I'll, I'll meet the boys to have a few, uh, few IPAs there then. Bloody inconsiderate not timing the birth of the baby in line with the end of season awards. Well, I, I, I am, I have been fined for not attending. <laughs> um, I, I believe ne at the next possible opportunity, I do have to buy a jug. Um, uh, it's got to be a jug and, of baby shampoo, James. You no, know, it's, it's going to be a jug of lager, and I also do have to do a pint because I won an award and wasn't there to collect it. Uh, that's fair enough. Jamie, what what have you got in your fine keeping of alcohol this evening? The latest ale from Wales Ales. I have got Mumbles Light from Mumbles Brewery. So this is quite well. It is very light. It's three point four percent. So it's not going to get you pissed. You can have a few of these, and you don't have to worry. Um, wanky bollocks. Let's see what it says. It's a new recipe and under a new name. We made it lighter in color, lighter in body, lighter in bitterness, and lighter in strength. To give you a highly sessionable summer pale ale with a crisp flavour and a subtle black currant aroma. I'm not picking up much black currant, I gotta be honest, but it's perfectly fine, you know, it's drinkable, you know, it's not too heavy like some beers can be. So um yeah, that's Mumbles Light from the Mumbles Brewery. Mm. You'd have thought with black currant in it, it would be dark. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. For YouTube viewers, you can see it's a, it is a very light colour. Um mm. it's fine. It's it's fine. Would I buy another one of these? No, probably not. If I saw the supermarket, but <laughs> yeah, I like trying well, different mate. ones. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's it. A weird question. Is perfectly fine a Newport saying because Grav, yeah, not Grav, Gav says it all the time, and I've, I've just, I just thought it was something he said, but you say it a lot as well. So, yeah, I don't know. Perfectly fine. Oh, you made it. I just like the idea of perfectly fine as being like the Got most fine out of ten thing in the ma imaginable. Well, we're both from the valleys being Gavsy, so it could be a valleys thing, couldn't it? Oh, so, uh, yeah, I was thinking, maybe... you know, it's the Charlie Atkinson of anything. Perfectly You've got fine. affinity then. <laughs> affinity. <laughs> well, let's not go down that route. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, What have you got, um, Harley? Well, speaking of Newport, I'm doing the Jamie this week, and I've got Tony Rebo 505. Oh, uh, good choice. In honour in honor of uh, the Arctic Monkey song, one of the best set closers ever. Uh, and I'm, that's not up for discussion. Uh, the wanky box on this is we have one rule never just make vanilla ice cream, which is a bit of big at Swansea as well with Joe's. <laughs> I, I cannot speak as a former Joe's employee. I'd just like to point out. That is quite <laughs> that's really, um, yeah, so it's 6.2, um, just very nice hoppy. It's, they call it a Nipo, which I think is a suppose, well, I don't know if they're trying to say it's a Newport IPA or a New England IPA or whatever, but. It's nice. I've, I've, also got a, I've also got some Coke to wash it down with because 6.2% the amount I drink these days, I'll be on the floor. <laughs> well, I I picked up one of my strangely named beers and put it in the fridge at lunchtime and didn't actually check the back of it. And then, as of, like about an hour ago, I was going, right, okay, let's, let's get ready for the pod. And then I looked at the back of it, given some recent experiences of drinking 8% alcohol on, on the pod, and this was 8.5, so I thought, bollocks to that. I'm not going to have that one. And I picked up a bottle of um, cider that I had lying around. So this is one I've had before. It's a Pembrokeshire Cider Company. It's the William Marshall Cider. And the the only banky bollocks on it is um, that he's from Pembroke and William Marshall is from Pembroke and they make it in Pembroke. And he never actually visited Pembroke as far as I'm aware, but... He gets all the credit. So, um, yeah, so it's a nice clear. So it is quite dry and it is quite nice. It, it, but it's a summer drink and it's just feel it's pissing down and it just yeah. doesn't feel right. But it's it's what well, it is nice. It's a nice one. So there. 
Right. Okie koki. Let's crack on then with some news desk, Jane. And uh, while mm. you're doing your news desk, we're all going to be on our phones seeing if Cardiff have, have actually announced it. So if we all start getting excited, it's because Cardiff have announced something while Jamie's talking. Go on, mate. You crack on. Okay. Well, let's start with the Scarlets then, shall we? So big clear out down west. Last week, the Scarlets confirmed the departure of 15 players. And that included the likes of, I mean, I'm not going to name them all because we haven't got time, quite frankly, but it's including guys such as Wynne Jones, Dan Jones, Scott Williams, Ryan Combier, and Jonathan Davis, Foxy, who at the age of 36 is not retiring. Um, he's just looking for a new club. Um, so it'd be very interesting to see where it ends up. That's got um, America or Japan all over that, isn't it? So, um, wow. yeah, interesting to see where Foxy ends up. Brilliant player, brilliant career. And then off the field, team manager, Sarah Davis, and the strength and conditioning coach Reese Jones are also leaving with the latter, having worked with the Scarlets for 16 years. So it's a big clear out going on there. Leave always your reaction to the news. Anything that stands out to you in those uh, list of names leaving the club? Um, yes and no. I mean, there's some that probably should have gone a while ago. Um, I, I think the one that a lot of people are shocked by is Combier. He's just, yeah. you know, he, he was... All singing, all dancing 12 months ago and just as not have a look in the last 12 months. Um, had an all right game uh, uh, on, on the weekend. And, yeah, just don't really understand that one. The rest of them, I mean, Wynne Jones is, is is another one that people are a little bit, you know, he, he's probably got the scrimmage in that, that we need as he got the all-round play. So, uh, you know, but and there's rumours going around on, on Facebook and social media about you know background stuff that I'm not going to get into for various mm. different reasons but um yeah it, yeah we were told Christmas time it was going to be 15 um and then it's slowly drip feeded um Sarah losing Sarah I think that's a big shock um we were told something different at the time we we're told it's a restructuring of finance and it's just going to be financed by the WIU rather than Scarlet's, uh, and then the next day she's gone, um, which is ridiculous. Um, but we were also told that you know, uh, Charlie Titcomb was probably leaving and he's not on that list, so he's staying, so that's that's a big bonus. And Leather Barrow as well, we were told Leather Barrow was probably leaving and he's not on that list. And we were told Louse is going, and we were told you know, Sa um. Uh, Craig was going, so you know there's there's names that were kind of expected that are staying. So it is what it is. We'll see what comes next season. To be honest. Okay, moving on to the Ospreys then. Bad news for the Ospreys and Wales as Lock Adam be the set to miss Wales this summer matches because of an ankle injury. Toby Booth said he fell out of a lineout and hurt his ankle. I can't see him playing for the rest of the season, and it will be difficult for him to tour this summer. I know we've always spoke about Adam Beard, you know, being a Marmite player, but for me, that's a big blow for Wales in the summer too. It's a big blow for Ospreys as well, of course, but um, he's highly rated as far as I'm concerned. I think he's a really good player. He so does need a rest. Disappointing though. news. He I mean, there is stuff as well. He has a stop playing rugby probably non-stop since the start of the 2021 season. Because mm. mm, he, yeah. he toured of the Lions, then straight into Ospreys. He's barely missed a game for Wales. You know, he is a Marmite player. Obviously, the, the, the Facebook have been loving it. You know, Ooh, what does he bring in all that? Um, but it is a huge, huge loss uh, for us it, in a position we're already <laughs> short in because we've got so many second row injuries. Yeah. I could still see and that then... and taking him anyway. <laughs> oh, even though he said he's injured, he's ruled out. <laughs> he took him when his appendix literally exploded. In Japan, yeah. Gatlin loves him. Yeah. Uh, Gatlin will have him just so he can cuddle him at night. He's the son <laughs> he never wants. It's the son he wanted, as opposed to the son he got. It's, it's not Brim. But yeah, anyway, Poor so Beard is likely out for the season. And then today, Ospreys have announced um, winger slash centre Tom Florence. He signed a new deal. The 21 year old has made 11 appearances for Wales under 20s and featured in three separate Six Nations Championships. So, yeah, good news for the Ospreys here, keeping hold of the young talent. Yeah. Let's move on to Cardiff then. Seven-storey Rory. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, I gotta say this, right? I've, I spoke about this on the group. What is it with Cardiff for their supporters and fucking cringy nicknames for players? It's so cringe, isn't it? Seven story Rory. So, yeah, What's Cardiff have three side and cringy story performances. Fulton. I'd rather cringy performances than the awful nicknames that you're coming out with. It's really, really bad. Okay. But excuse so, me, who's, who's lost 10 uh, in a row? I mean, that's Dragon's form right there, Harley. So, given, yeah, given, that, J- pride. given that Jamie's the brought pride. up... Given that Jamie's brought up just how bad nicknames can be, I think we all need to ask our social media followers for a nickname for Jamie for next week, and it's got to be as equally cringy as Seven Story Maury. So uh, nothing will be as cringy as that. Nothing will be. There's not the the lane train left the station. Genuinely, lane train. Yeah, it it took (laughs) um, it took years off my life reading that sentence. Like I honestly, I I I I'm not Owen Lane's biggest fan, right? But poor poor son, like he. If he's and he's Welsh, well, that train didn't even leave on time, bless him. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Jim. The worst Jinkin thing Javid. is I support Bristol as well, so I get it twice because they've got Rich Lane, who they all who they call the Lane Train. Oh, of course, Ooh. yeah. What other ones? Jinkin Jared, uh, Hot Stepper. That's Willis Hallahola. Oh, that's a ones, fair Harley. description of Hallahola when he was fully fit. Nip- that's not Nipper, bad. Nipper was fine. I didn't mind Nipper. Nipper got originally Nipper. Nipper. Oh. I didn't mind Nipper. That was that was an Osprey's nickname. Um, Alice Jenkins' well, nickname Simba. Yeah. Again, not cringy. Seven Story Rory's like a fucking wrestling heel. Oh, it's fucking awful. That's that's <laughs> late bad. that's late stage WCW. That is. That's like fucking Eric Bischoff booking. What's Thomas Young's? He must have really one. have one. Dice Dice yeah. Dice yeah, Dice <laughs> I suppose. It's not yeah, as bad as Paul Lewis Jones. More endearing than Derwin's boy. Yeah, I was going to say it's not as bad as Lewis Jones, who has two nicknames: <laughs> Derwin's son and Cyclops. In for Cardiff news, then. Yeah. Anyway, um, mm. Kevin Parker he's going to retire from rugby at the end of the season to pursue a career outside the sport. So the tight end have played six times so far for Cardiff after arriving last summer. That was a bit out of the blue, Harley. Or was you expecting that one? No. <laughs> that was very. That was, it was, wasn't it? You asked. <laughs> no. Um. Yeah. Just. Um. I mean, I. I just feel like it was. I don't know who was it who went up to. I think it might have been Hugh who said, "Did Kieran Parker have like the ultimate card of season? Like, turns up, gets red carded for nearly killing a guy, and then retires." <laughs> I, there was the boxes are retired after one and zero, dicking around and Cardiff didn't want to offer him another contract and he just went, ah, oh, fuck it. I feel like what happened but with he, in Academia. I got he never did anything, contracts. He never did anything to warrant a contract for me. No. Like he was, he was below average. To, 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 to use, to use the, the Gwent Valley's expression, he was perfectly fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's the Cardiff news then. Uh, just a little bit of Dragons. So, so Dragons have dominated the news in the past couple of weeks. Just a little bit of news then. So they've appointed a key member. Of, I'm sorry, James, you've got to suck this up now. Dragons, no, it's not for your tier tier either. Um, they've appointed a key member of Gatlin's backroom team as the new head of performance. So Dr. Ryan Chambers, who is currently head of sports science with the WRU, has been employed by them for the past 15 years. He's going to join the Dragons this summer. And he will be replacing Dan Bow, who of course is leaving to link up with the Georgian national team. And then my final bit of news um, was friendship final. So Clan Dovery made it back to back titles after edging out Newport 14 7 in the Welsh Friendship final at Church Bank on Saturday. Really good game, this, by the way. Um, commiserations to Newport, who've had a fine season. Ty Morris's men have won. Well, they did win 15 matches in a row before this final, but they couldn't quite get over the finishing line against. A strong Clan Dovery side. So, um, yeah, very entertaining game. Congratulations to Clan Dovery on another well deserved title win. Mm. The EDC is looking quite good for next season, apparently. Mm. So, <clears throat> right. So, let's um, see. We're all quite happy now. Jamie's given us some good news. We've had some cheery bits. There's people coming in. And now we've got to discuss last weekend. Yeah. <sighs> Here we go. Right. Another Jeez. sobering weekend for Welsh rugby, wasn't there? <laughs> <laughs> Wish I wasn't sober for it. Uh, 
James must be sitting there going like, oh, maybe I can stretch the whole uh, paternity thing for another week and just, just ignore rugby for another week. I was considering well, We should be used uh, to this. We should be used to this yeah, now, should we, though, yeah. these weekends? Yeah. So, starters on Friday night then, Jamie, uh, Dragons and Soap. I mean, it was a lovely night. Let's start with that. It, it was. was a lovely night, wasn't it? Let's go down It was a beautiful there. night. Mm. Well, the first thing I want to say, I want to give a shout out to Brock Harris. So, Brock joined us on the Dragons Lair poll. We uh, did a bonus podcast with him. And he was talking to me from um, the Stormers Team Hotel in Cardiff. And what a nice guy. Genuinely lovely bloke. We had a good chat before and after we recorded. Just a really nice guy. Great chat. Um, yeah, so I want to thank him for coming on and giving up his time. He had long just finished his captain's run and he jumped on. And, and uh, yeah, it was a really interesting chat. Just talking about his upbringing, his career. He talked about the differences between scrummaging and the loose and the tight. Talked a little bit about the stormer. So it was a really good chat. I really enjoyed it. And he was a bloody nice bloke. So thank you to Brock for joining me last week. In terms of this game then, um, Stormers head coach John Dobson said the final scoreline was probably one of the most unfair ones I've seen in rugby and he is 100% right because that scoreline does not tell the full story. So if you hand watched this game where you just saw the score pop up on your phone, on Twitter or wherever, you look and you go, oh well that's the result that's expected because the Stormers won by 20 plus points. That's what a lot of people had them down to win by. You just think well yeah, fine. But like I said, that doesn't tell the full story. So I actually fought Dragons for large parts of this game. I forced the Stormers into making a lot of errors. We were the better team in our first half. You know, we had 72% possession and 77% territory. And yet going into half time, we was only winning by one point, which is pretty disappointing because I felt that Domino should have had more points on the board. But um, an error from Will Reed, who failed to collect an up and under, led to their first try. It was a lovely kick for, from Gallant, by the way, to set it up, but it came from an error. Um, and they came out of the blue that try because in our first half, the Stormers didn't really fire a shot. We was well on top. But like I said, going into the game just one point ahead into half-time, maybe going into half-time just one point ahead, it, was, it felt a little bit unjust. But um, the second half, I mean, Stormers were much better. You know, they came out and they started to play with a lot more energy and intent and tempo. But... We stuck at it and, you know, we were leading. In our final quarter, the Dragons were 21 16 up. And Aaron Wainwright was doing Aaron Wainwright things. He was outstanding again. He's my player of the season, Aaron Wainwright. I think he's been absolutely outstanding, led the charge yet again for the Dragons. Harry Keddy worked in Clare Yard, been a really good shift. I thought Roger Jones was excellent. It's no coincidence that when he went off, our scrum went to shit, which I'll talk about in a bit. But I thought he had a very strong scrum gym performance. Dane Blacker was pretty good. I mean, like, I know Dane Blacker hasn't set the world alight since moving to the Dragons from Scarlets, but he had a really good game against Connett and he had a really good game against the Stormers. So he's had two really good games now in a row, and I think that he will progress and get better. But um, yeah, it was a good performance from him. And, you know, the Dragons went toe to toe with one of the best teams in the URC. But that game, unfortunately, like a lot of games this season for the Dragons, it was lost in the last 10 minutes. And I don't know what that's down to. I don't know whether it's fitness or mentality, but the last 10 minutes is where it really goes tits up for the Dragons. So Rodrigo Martinez gets a yellow card for persistent scrum offences. And I have to say, by the way, I was really disappointed with Martinez because he is a pretty decent scrummager. But when he came off the bench, that's all he did was just give away scrum penalties. But Chris Bunsby warned him several times. And then he, he had no choice but to send him off. So I, I was pretty disappointed with that. And then... Angus O'Brien comes off the bench. Great to see him back, making his return from injury. And then he gets taken off injured. So that'll be forces then. Uh, you know, we have to reshuffle our back line. So we got Steph, who's playing a fly half. Then we got Seal Tomlinson moving into midfield. And then we got a scrum half, Tate Blacker, on the wing. And then we bring on Morgan Lloyd, making his senior debut. So it was a disjointed back line. And of course, we have to play the game with 14 men. The rest of the game, that time is with 14 men. <laughs> and oh boy, did the Stormers punish it. You know, they scored three tries in the last eight minutes. And it's a shame, really, because that made the scoreline look far worse than what it should have been. And it doesn't do the Dragons justice. Um, but look, you know, there were plenty of positives to take from that game. Um, I do think it was probably the best Welsh performance this weekend. Um, and the Dragons need to lick their wounds now and go on to um, Swansea, where they got 
a Welsh derby to look forward to. But yeah, positives, but you know, same old frustrations in terms of game management, particularly in the last quarter of a game. Uh, I've read a stat on the weekend that said the Dragons have led in the last quarter of six games, but they've only won three of them. You know, so like I said, I don't know if that's mentality or fitness, but that's something that needs to be addressed. They got to start putting in 80 minute performances, or they're just going to keep losing week in, week out. But um, yes, uh, a positive performance, but unfortunately, uh, no reward from it. Hmm. So, from that team on on Friday, I mean, you people probably heard what um, Cuthbert had to say about Tia uh, Tia coming in and um, as defence coach next and, and basically kicking people out and, and what have you. Well, what do you make of that with that team from last Friday, Jim? Was was there players on that pitch that just don't deserve to be there or how, how are you reading it? I think Dragons have a core of players and Chris Kerwin from the South West Argus, we talked about this on the Dragons layer pod. The Dragons have a core of players that probably are not URC standard. And I would argue that we've been loyal to certain players who we probably should have let go you know, a couple of years ago. And I'm not going to name names on this podcast. I'm not going to do it on Dragons. I'm not calling players out. But I think we all know there's certain players. You, know, you look at the team, you can pick one or two out from Friday. And you look at the Dragon squad as a whole and you go, you know, which, so I'm not, I'm not going to name names, but you look at the guy, you think, would he get into any other team in the URC? Probably not. You know, I think some of our guys are Welsh membership standard. But uh, I don't disagree with what Cuthbert said. Though I would say, you know, I, I don't see how Tia Tia is just going to kick people out because at the end of the day, Dai Flambin's the head coach, you know. Mm. But I actually think Phil Tia Tia is going to, he's not just coming in as defence coach. I think he's going to take on a lot of responsibility. I think he's clearly there to support Dai because Dai has talked about having someone experienced to lean on. But it wouldn't surprise me if Bill Tia Tia ends up making a lot of, you know, calling a lot of shots. So uh, don't be surprised. I think he's going to go there, change the culture, and I think Dai will lean heavily on him. And if it does go tits up with Dai, you know, and it's, he's not getting the salt, I wouldn't be surprised if they say, OK, make Bill Tia Tia head coach because he's got that experience, as we know. But uh, I don't disagree with Cuthbert. Yeah, you know, I, I think he makes a fair point. Yeah, I think some players are at the Dragons for the wrong reasons, as he uh, said. But um, it's just that with it. I think all of four teams are probably carrying players who we think, yeah, you're not quite good enough, mate. But with budget restrictions and everything else in depth, I, I guess we got to keep hold of those players, haven't we? You know? Yeah, you better with, having somebody in rather than an, uh, an empty space. With the tier tier thing. Right. Obviously, I didn't get my chance to fucking rant about this last week, you bastards. Um, I, I am a big non... I, I hate rugby's obsession with the old school, right? Is mm. that, you know, these players have no bottle anymore, or, you know, bring back rucking and all, all that bollocks, right? It fucking does my head in. Right? And unfortunately, rugby punditry is still dominated by young leading rugby figures or people who talk about rugby right now, exactly like that but there is something to be said for having someone like Philo Tia Tia in your system is that not that's not necessarily he's going to go out and say right um, you're going to kill some fucker today no we were Jamie and I were talking in the rap chat earlier about the Dragons Ospreys game last year where Di Flan had said to his players that Osprey's got a young 10 out in Jack Walsh. Go out, pressure him. Let him know you're there. You know, the classic Sunday league thing or, or Saturday league rugby where you're like, you know, first hit boys, let them know you're there, all that. And the Dragons players, particularly Fairbrother, Moriarty and Tompkinson, took that as, let's kill this poor Australian boy, you know, uh, <laughs> and subjected him to physical torture. But there is something to be said about that in you have a character like Tia Tia in, you know, the, Sean Holly said in comms that, you know, if you can keep Jerry, uh, Jerry Collins in check, then you're doing something right. You know, the, the, there is a case of having that, old, not old school, but having that grit that, you know, and Di, that, you know, I can't ever imagine Di Flanagan getting shouted, let alone getting angry. So no, having someone like, you know, Tia, yeah, someone having like Tia Tia there, it was basically like his enforcer, you know, it, it can only be a good thing, which he which he probably was. <laughs> you know, Di Flan was at the Ospreys when Fila was there. I, um, I can I can imagine Di Flanagan maybe looking somebody straight in the eye and then bringing his glasses down to the end of his nose 
and looking at them over the top of his glasses. I think that's the about his, luck, yeah, <laughs> that's about as angry as Dave Flanagan's going to get. And say it, I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> he, he that's just, what he says he to just, the players after every game. <laughs> he just looks like he leaves an angry TripAdvisor in rooms. Like that's the, that's the extent of his anger. <laughs> so I I I, I think Cuthbert is right, but I, I do think that feel he will bring a culture of. Yeah, you're going to die for this badge, or you're not going to wear it, because that's what essentially what, what he did at the Ospreys when he was, at you know when he was a player. You know he was 36 when he he joined the Ospreys, right? Mm. And he left there, you know, a cult hero for a reason. But he had the attitude of, you are going to die for this badge, or you're not going to wear it. Mm. Yeah, uh, exactly what the dragon seen. I think he's a guy that will command respect. In that dressing room. So let's see how it goes. You know, I am optimistic. Yeah. It's a very good appointment, but um, yeah. Okay, cool. See what happens. So next game over the weekend was Scarlets and Ulster. Um, I thought we made steps again. Uh, yeah, you know, small steps forward again. I thought two Pelo two came back and actually showed uh, a little bit of the the promise that he started the show last season. You know, we were missing a couple of big names who, who we've relied on. Them. A lot this season, you know, Alex Craig, um, Sam, Big Sam, uh, you know, there were were some big names out and actually the boys that stepped in actually did very well. But that first half, Ulster just didn't look like getting anywhere near, uh, they, they certainly weren't getting close to beating us the way they did in that first half. So... I, I counted three clear opportunities today where we should have actually put, you know, a better try on. If, if we'd have held a bit of, uh, bit of cool head and actually looked at what the right option was, you know, we, we basically took the wrong action. And if we'd have taken the right option, then the chances are we'd have been in for at least two or three tries. But we've been slow to get off the mark We've been slow to finish games. We the first twenty, the last twenty have been where we've been awful uh, for most of the season. We played the first forty superbly. We didn't concede in the last fifteen. So, you know, it, it, there are two yellow cards, two stupid yellow cards. I, I'm still not hundred percent on that Gareth Davis one. It it didn't look purposeful. You've got to slow that down a hell of a lot. No, I know what you're going to say. I, I no 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 no. You've I, got to slow I, it. You'll get your chance on the Ospreys in a minute. I partly agree so. with you. No, I partly agree with you is what I'm going to Fuck say. Fuck you now. Is, is <laughs> I agree with you in that. If I, I'm of the thing that trips are weird because James Ratty had one against Ulster hmm. earlier in the season where I was like, ooh, you've had to slow that down quite a bit to see yeah. whether he stuck his leg out first, then his arms. But... It's clearly you know, ultimately if you put yourself in that position, you run that risk. Well, when when you look at it, he runs from behind the referee. He's coming at Gareth Davis. And the line he's running at happens to be you know behind the referee. So Gareth Davis sees him really really late. He, he's not in a position to tackle him, and he runs straight through him and he trips over it. I didn't say he he, he trips him. I'd say he trips over him. I'd say it's a penalty, and and that's about as much as it goes. But it is what it is. Um, you know, there were some stupid penalties that we gave away. We, we've given away stupid penalties in there, 22, that it's like going back to last season, that we're just, you know, there, there's no, there's nobody grabbing it by the bollocks and saying, this is what we're going to do. So, Bryce, can I, can I completely stop you for a second? Neith RFC has just put out an announcement. It's breaking news right now. Right. Oh, God. After our amazing end of season party, we are looking to make further improvements to our grounds and facilities. Our gym, recovery centre, and change rooms have been updated. The Ospreys won't be playing at our ground next season or thereafter. This was after representatives from both clubs have met. We wish Swansea and Bridgend all the best in securing that contract when Osprey CEO Lance Bradley makes his long anticipated announcement. Instead, we will focus on growing Neath RFC and the Panthers as our illustrious clubs, hosting an elite sevens tournament at other prestigious rugby events, as well as music and food festivals, family events such as Christmas Day, light switch on our Neath fireworks, to contribute to the success of Neath RFC and enliven our town. 
it really is all happening at me, Fire FC. Fuck me. Do you know what I oh. like about this announcement? Because I'm looking yeah, at it. Yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. There's I a mean, big please. red cross on the Osprey's logo. So they've got the Osprey's logo thing. next to leave. And they big red cross oh. right from the logo. Brilliant. That's basically this... you saying, fuck you, Osprey's. Anyway, <laughs> back, to, back is... to stuff that actually matters. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, I, I agree with you, Lee. Scarlet's right. look like they're getting better, but they were looking better this time last year. What's going to stop them just going to complete the shit in the off-season again? Yeah, and, and that was our argument at the start of the season. We had three warm-up games where we didn't put any of our senior team players at, at all in our warm-up games. So, I for, for, for about seven players, I think it was, I think we counted it at the time, seven players, their first warm-up game was URC kickoff. And and not Welsh players, not well, uh, not Welsh squad players or international squad players. It, you know, it just didn't make sense. So, yeah, you know, we're we're improving and improving and improving. The problem is, is that we take a step down over the summer, and we've got to start improving again. Then, yeah, it's frustrating, but there there were plenty of I thought you and Nicholas. Uh, uh, there were a couple of, of breaks that you and Nicholas made, and you just like very underrated, very underrated. Yeah, player, you just... Nicholas. I like him a lot, I do. And and I think he, I'd like to see him stay at fullback. I, I think he's a utility back, so he plays everywhere. But mm. I'd like to see him stick at at, at fullback, just because he was, yeah, he's he's really starting to find his feet there. So yeah, two below two. Super Law 2 carried well. I gotta say though, mm. how dull was Tame Plumtree's yellow cards? Because I thought oh, Plumtree actually had a decent go. Yeah. It was so cynical and dull. Like playing the, the ball on the floor like that, you will never get away with it. And only that, Warren Gatland's in the stands. Like he's yeah. trying to impress him now. He's just back from injury. He's getting up to it to Australia. And he did that. He thought, how dull, mate. Mm. Especially when Gatland watching, you know. And the thing is, is he had like three or four decent runs where he's coming at pace, yeah. he's, he's taking players out, he's taking three or four players down with him, he's creating space, and you go like, that's what I want from a big six. You know, he, he, mm. he's competitive over the top of the ball, he's competitive in a line-out, and then he just goes and does something stupid. It's, it's very yeah, so frustrating. But and, but that's where we need somebody like Ken Owens, like Jonathan Davis, with, with a, a bit more experience and a bit of now to Jim right, boys, Calm it, put the foot on it for five minutes, slow it down, and let's let's just do something different. But but well, that's leadership, isn't it? That's what me and Gavin constantly talk about on Dragons yeah, here, the right. lack of leadership. It's, you it's need those what we're guys. Yeah. Yeah. So talking of lack of leadership, <clears throat> Lions and Cardiff. Off you go, Harley. All right. What well, what can I say that I haven't said already this season? Cardiff won. <laughs> Oh, I said that this season. <laughs> Don't forget, we're in the League of the Dragons, so you know we've always got two wins in the eye. Go on, man. And uh, I mean, as I'm looking at it, one half of the screen has beaten the Stormers; the other half haven't. Uh... Second string Stormers were absolute dog shit. But yeah, go on, carry off. The ma- the ma- you still it was win. second string though. It was it was it was no idea first team squad. Wait, anyway, go on. The man, you still got to beat him. If you if you'd beaten that t- that second string Stormers team, you'd be just having oh, like, oh, like, oh, oh, get on with it, fuck it out. The only surprise, <laughs> like literally, the only surprise positive was somehow we we were all right at the scrum. Yes, um, scrum went well, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, that was that. I mean, that was probably the only real positive. Unfortunately, our kick Tina's to be got massively out kicked. Um, there's no other real support. I mean, can win it was imperious, but I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, I say that every week and it's always true. Uh, I thought Ellis Bevan was very good when he came on the second half. I thought that was a tactical thing, uh, but it turned out um, Gonzalo Birch who uh, failed a HIA, which is really worrying as we only took two scrum halves out. So I don't know. I mean, mm. hope you might be doing a scouts and calling Mike Phillips at mid tour, get him a cap, get him a cap for Cardiff. Uh, I'll be honest, it was just really lacklustre. The, there was no real execution. I, I had a look. Can you? Can any of you guys guess how many teams scored, how many teams from the top four men's leagues scored fewer points than Cardiff this weekend? So top four being Prem, top 14, URC and Super Rugby. I can't remember how many points you scored on the weekend. 13. <laughs> Go on, um, any ideas? Oh, it's 
It's going to be a French team. Nope, no French team. No, okay. Um... Connor got 12. Oh, yeah, Connor. Uh, Gloucester got nilled to yeah, yeah, which got, frankly, is even more embarrassing. <laughs> uh, and then Wild Pacifica yeah. and the Drewer, who scored 10 and 5 points, respectively. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, sorry, I might, the Drewer might have scored 7, sorry. But either way, that's pretty fucking shoddy. For a team that's supposed to be attacking sexy as UA rugby, our attack is woeful. And we've been trying to sort of say, oh, well, you know, they've got to get used to new systems, get new combinations. But we've had a lot of time with it, and we're just so bloody stupid. I think part of the problem is, you know, when you make a mistake and you've got to try and make up for it, and then it ends up getting worse and worse and worse. It was a bit of that. So, like, even, like, in the last 10 minutes or so, when we went out of a try, you know, to super score from the rolling ball, and then we get a, and we get a penalty, and we've got eight minutes to go. We've still got plenty of time to score. Score once, score twice to, to give us a show. And we go for the quick tap, we get isolated, and then as the, the Lions players are rushing back and the ref's called, yeah, it's all fine, it's all good, go for it. It just comes and dislodges the ball, and then Shuka scores again down the other end because we just weren't patient and we were just trying to push things constantly. And it's just, it's just getting really fucking tired and talking about it. I mean, you know, all, all the talk of us, oh, yeah, you know, we went away to Munster and Ulster and Glasgow got picked up points. We haven't picked up points since. We haven't won since Boxing Day, of which a game is such an outlier. If you take that game out of our statistics for the season, we lose half a try a game and and five points. But that's, that's how much an outlier that Boxing Day game was. Mm. And it's just going to really fucking piss me off, to be <laughs> honest. So Cam Winnett was good was as well. Hmm. I thought Cam Winnett was good. Yeah, Cam Winnett is fantastic every day. He looks hmm. so much better than most big players on the park, whichever team he plays. Yeah. It's you know, that's what he's positive, anyway. imperious. Hmm. But it's just getting really frustrating that we're we're scoring a handful of points a game when we should be scoring more. We've had the up, we had the opportunity to score more. We don't take them. Uh, I. You get some good performances from people. I thought Mackenzie Martin, when he was on, played quite well in Aaron Law- Alan Lawrence, but you know, they can't do it all. Alan Lawrence looked good. I thought mm. Alan Lawrence was he looks like a man with a point to prove, and I was quite impressed. Yeah. He's he, he very much fits in that Yo and Nicholas category of he's not good enough to be like up here, but he's way better than like Welsh Premiership standards. He just sort of sits in the middle. Yeah. So the I thing like is that, the, but... the, Solid region. You've got to player. appreciate some good, yeah. solid. Mm. You know, nothing good, wrong with that. No. Yeah, There's something they, to be said they, for those they're the I thought yeah. Steph yeah. Hughes at Scarlets was a perfect example of that. Was just would do the job and would never let you down. You know, Nicholas is doing it mm. now. You know, I actually thought Dan Evans was that sort of player as well. Dan Evans was good enough to play for Wales. Fuck, yeah, at his peak, he was the best player in the fucking league. I don't know. We <laughs> fucking wasn't. <laughs> Steph Evans Three fucked it up with his haircut, mate. So the, the less said about Steph Evans and his haircut nowadays, the better. So safe to say you didn't enjoy that game on the weekend, then. Uh, no, I mean uh, it didn't. It didn't help. It coincided with a teething baby with a horrific nappy rash, screaming at me constantly. So oh, I had to you... deal with that. And then, so not only did I have to know that we'd gotten beaten, because it was actually quite cl- once again quite close up until the last ten minutes. Then mm. two quick tries, and we're out of it. Mm. I tell, I, tell know, you, I, had you, do, I had to watch it back to find to see this. You, you boys and you, you were uh, young dads and you're all oh, the babies doing this, the babies doing that. Well, you, you think you got problem? My tomatoes haven't come this year. Yeah, I got no tomatoes in the in the potting shed at all. You think you got problems? I spent all day Sunday repotting rotten tomatoes. You boys got nothing with my babies. Got a. a it's not quite the same, though, Lee, is it? It's a bit of a yeah, but the thing is, the tomorrow is because tomatoes. you're in I'm so <laughs> glad <laughs> I'm out of that happens. <laughs> I, I, I remember, like, any time anyone says about it now, I, I look back and I go, yeah, nobody gave a shit when I was going through it, so you're fucking not having any either. James, let's let's talk about the highlight of the weekend and uh, lens to Ospreys, mate. Because, um, to be fair... Half time, you, you weren't out of the game. Even with 20 minutes to go, you were still in the game. And then the floodgates opened. So, uh... it's tough. It's tough. There's no, you, we got Leinster. There's no, 
you know, we're just really unlucky that they because they picked up no points from South Africa, they are having I say it as if it's a, a fucking plight and then they're having to play their good team. Like because they yeah, because they couldn't secure top spot, they you know, are trying to maximize their points by playing their, you know, island players. Which is great, you know, good on them. You know, I'm glad that they're in the you know, they're in a position to do that. It's really fucking daunting as a team when you're in it and then they're like, Yep, yeah, right, we're gonna bring on Dan Shee and Jack Conan. Uh, James Charlie Gibson Natter. Park, Charlie Natter. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, it's just what what can you do? And and we look it's not fair, tight. Seth. We it's look not fair. It's not a level playing field. It's and we just yeah. You know, and I, I I have sort of been saving this right. But Hugh Griffin said to me at the start of the season, he said it's you know it's not fair to compare the Scarlets to the rest of the regions right because they have to go their two tour thing to South Africa and they went straight down to Leinster then. Mm. Um. Over three yep. games, we've just done the exact same thing. I've done and, that same yeah. as what we did, and, and, and we did it in a slightly different order. We, you know, we, we went out in Cape Town, and then you know, Ospreys have never conceded sixty points in their history, and we did it two weeks in a row. And it's not down to the defensive system; is it down to the person? I don't think. I think it's just that we're so tired. Mm. We've got ten players. I think on a thousand minutes now and fifteen on eight hundred plus. We've got no second rows left, which would just look absolutely fucking knackered. And you've been away from home for three weeks and it, and it is tough and, and look, these sound like excuses and they probably are. But at the end of the day we got beaten by a team with a vastly bigger budget who could bring on a vast different you know, amount of quality. Um They'll learn from that. We were inaccurate when we did have the ball, especially in the second half. And you know, I tweeted out saying, that's what Leinster do. They will smother you and kill you on transition. Mm. That, 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 that's exactly what they do. And there were glimpses of good things. I thought on the whole, Nagy was good. He's getting back to where he was. Great going forward. You know, probably a bit slow on the turn. Um, let's hope he doesn't use Sage um, because Brian Habana will, will have a field day with them. Um, but I, I again, he's a develop. He's he's a player that's developing his game. I thought Dan Edwards on the whole was great. You know, he sets up, um, tried. You know that kick across for Luke Morgan when that disgusting tackle in the air should be jailed for that. Um, <laughs> disgusting tackle wasn't that. Uh, one, is is that he your number good. one? Is he your number one uh, try scorer so far this season? Uh, oh, penalty try, Mister Penalty, yeah. <laughs> Damn, I need to be probably up there. <laughs> then he scores an own try, bastard. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, look, I, this, I, I don't know what else I can say. I, mm. I genuinely don't know what I can say that to our race fans that sixty points is not good enough. That I know that, but there is contextual reasons behind it, and we, yeah, we can go there. What I have learned this weekend is that Leinster fans are the softest fucking people on earth. You cannot say anything about Leinster fans without them getting a pissy fit. Oh my god! What have you said um, now? <laughs> I, was, honestly, I haven't said. Anything have I got to speak weird. to my friend the solicitor again? <laughs> no, me and me and Robbie had some great banter with them when the team sheets came out, and a lot of that was light heart. Mm-hmm. And then someone uh, like Murray Kinsella tweeted over that his general set of gifts that he does on the weekend and then one of them was about Caelan Doris kicking the ball out of Ruben Morgan Williams' hand in the ruck which is a clear by the law is a clear penalty and probably a yellow card oh yeah, and it is, the ball got kicked out of your right hands yeah it's not happens to any other team you've no, tricked exactly. Harley now mate it's dark arts you know what I mean like, and I thought he shouldn't have got pinged for it and he was asked multiple times in that same ruck not to go near the ball not to kick the ball and then he does it, and it's given as a scrum to Leinster, which I think they go and score from. And But that gets pointed out on Twitter, and even Andy Goode, right, who I had to agree with this morning. I felt oh, sick, I had to wash man. myself. And, and, but Leicester, Leinster fans are just the softest as ever, and they're like, oh, yes, this never happens to any other team. Oh, tweeted from I, their like, gold baths. And... The, the thing is, right, is you can look at all four games over the season, uh, over the weekend, right, and I'll uh, talk so, about your wins, though, Lee. No, no, we, we talk about how... So, 
Hugh said a couple of weeks ago about, um, you know, it's it's set in a referee's mind. Yeah, so Leinster's first try against you was forward pass. There was uh, a try against us where like two or three phases before there was a forward pass. There was one of the tries against you, Harley, was uh, there was a, a, a knock on. It looked like a knock on and a ruck before. So, the, you know, a couple of phases before. And I can pretty much guarantee, Jamie, there would have been something in your game as well where, you know, it, it was a 50-50 decision. And referees aren't even stopping to go, oh, hang on, was that forward? You know, but the, the one in the Scarlets game, he passes the ball one side of the 15. You can't even see the 15, um, the, sorry, the 10-yard line. You can't even see the 10-yard line in, in the screen when he passes it. And the guy catches it over the fifty, uh, the ten yard line. Well, he was on the fifteen, so you know it's it's a good four or five meters forward, and fairly obvious because there's a line on the pitch, and it's just not given. On yours, he was inside the twenty-two, and he passed it from inside the twenty-two to outside the twenty-two. You know, there's a fucking white line on the pitch, ref, and it shows you. You know, it's not about was it, well, was his hands moving backwards and all of this kind of stuff. He was inside the 22 when he left the ball. He was outside the 22 when he caught the ball. You know, the, the, whichever way you look at it, that's a forward pass. So Best teams get away with it, though, don't they? They always yeah, get away with the dark arts. So that's the problem. That's what that's I'm saying. Refing on reputation. I talked about yeah. it when we played the Bulls. We had a lot of harsh calls go against us. Yep. And we, it's the same whenever the Dragons play. We're always reft on reputation. But the best mm. teams like your Leinsters and your All Blacks, they get away with the dark arts. Because I guarantee you, that incident that happened, kicking the ball at scrum, so if that happened down Ronnie Parade and the Dragons did it, that's they <laughs> clear yellow card. We'd be gone. The Dragons can't get away with shit like that. They yeah. wouldn't be smart enough to do it either. But they would not get away with it. But your, your, your Leinsters and your top teams in the league, they get away with it every time. Every time. Is, is this like where Nicky Smith scrummed a bit, like not straight, and Lee had a meltdown? Is that is that is that that? Nicky Smith doesn't know oh. how to go straight, mate. Right, let's move. <laughs> let's move on to previews for this weekend. Oh, so we, Cardiff, we, absolutely. Oh, new signing alert. No, yeah. what now? Cardiff have announced. Cardiff have announced. Cardiff have signed you and Stevens? Stevens from Falcon uh, Newcastle Falcon to. I wanted absolutely. Yeah. So you go there from Newcastle. Um, he yeah. sort his lid out. You and Stevens. That's my f- initial I, thoughts. That's I'll discuss that's more on the Cardiff Central podcast as we're on previews now. Harley, <laughs> quick reaction to that. Stat reaction to that news. Uh, he needs to news, sort his lid out because it's, it's Steph, yeah, we know Steph Evans levels of shit. It is, isn't but it? Player wise, good acquisition. Or, or do you I, I'll that? be honest, because of. Uh, TNT Sports uh, policies on broadcasting games. I've seen fuck off. You know what? Uh, okay. I, can, I can give you some stats about uh, Sam uh, Ewan Stevens. Uh, Welsh qualified former league uh, rugby league player who's been doing amazing work and underperforming. Oh, Newcastle. mine Lewis could be my dear. In, fa- in fact, <laughs> both Stevens and Adam Radwan have been on fire despite the general lack of success. Shane Williams vibes, but they're all powerfully built. Has created a turnover in twenty percent of the tackles he makes. Goes incredibly well when given any space from kicks and works really well along someone like Adam Redwan in great holes. Do you know who that was from? Oh, is, it, is that the Sam Lana? Sam who created that thread for me. <laughs> right. I told Let's... you he was a secret Cardiff fan. <laughs> Let's mm-hmm. move on to um, previews for this weekend. So we leave Osprey's Dragons till last boy, so we won't do it necessarily in order. So Sharks and Cardiff, Harley. Chance that they're going to be holding players back for cup finals, maybe. We said that when we uh, played the week before I the semi finals. So, so, you know, maybe they want to send them all off for a week to acclimatize to London again. Um, and if that happens, then maybe we have a chance, but honestly, I don't see it. I mm. just, I don't know. And, you know, I so said we've got one fit scrum half. We haven't even taken our, you know, ultra emergency backup scrum half in Ellis Jenkins. He's he stayed at home. I just foresee pain. And there's I a reason why pain. there is a reason for the audio <laughs> listeners. My my name on the thing is I've named it this to Shark Chum RFC because I feel like that's what's going to happen. I I think we found that the the title for this week's podcast, boys, is I, I foresee pain. So uh, we'll. <laughs> 
We'll do some really quick uh, stuff, and then we'll come back and do predictions in a minute, Harley. Okay, so... Well, so Jay... why are we starting in reverse order? Because I like oh, mixing things first. up. We're not doing in reverse order, because now we're going to do Zebra Scarlet, and then we're going to do Osprey's Dragon, and then we're going to do predictions. Some of us have got stuff in their head, man. Calm down. Um... Yeah, but I'm worried what's in your head, mate. <clears throat> you don't want to know what's in my head, mate. It's like Martin See? and his milkman. <laughs> <laughs> Right, Zebra Scarlet, we've made life really difficult for ourselves on this one because we should have beaten the, uh, the Sharks. Uh, we, we, we've we got to take something out of this game. We have to take something out of this game. Uh, come hell or high water, we we just got to come away with something. I'm all in favour of, yeah, that was a good performance. Let's have a better performance and keep improving and stuff. But fuck me, we need to come away with a win. So I don't care how we do it. I just need We just need a win. On that one, so let's let's look at Osprey's Dragons because I'm going to enjoy this one because James is shitting himself about this like he would not. He probably isn't. He probably (laughs) isn't. He is, mate. Trust me, he is. Remember last chat? I was on our chat earlier in the area room, and Lee's in there. I'm going to kick him out of it eventually. (laughs) You love Um, our job. (laughs) um, I'm just making new one. Uh, so I can freely talk about the Scarlets. Um, uh, and I, I just put, I said, why do you have a horrible feeling about Saturday? And even yesterday, it was like, it should be the end of season throw, but we run in the future tries and make the Dragons look shit, but it just stings at the minute. I, I said, I, I am deflated. I wasn't a bad, I had a really bad meeting this morning. I, I was a bit better. After I saw that Di Flanagan, like, Quote saying I want to upset the Ospreys. I was like, right. I well, what's wrong with that? Day. What do you expect him to say? He's not going to come out and go, well, your Ospreys do quite well actually. If we yeah. do yes. well, then that'd be nice. Becky, they need Becky a bonus Brick. point against us. Yeah. We'll just roll over and let them go. The he Specky, wants to Specky. win. How dare die yeah. wants to win a game? <laughs> the specky bastard from playing side of this. So, Jamie, what, what are you making of dragons uh, and Ospreys? Are you as confident with the dragons as Jamie uh, James is? Absolutely not. So, Will Reed is our only fit and available fly off for this game because Angus O'Brien lived off against the Stormers. Kai Evans is out because he broke a bone in the shed. So, as things stand, we want to go one fit fly off, and that's going to be Will Reed. Um, Ryan Woodburn and Dan Lydiat are on their way back, and they could be in contention for this game. It'd be great to see Ryan Woodburn back. I'm a big fan of his. Um, ben Carter will be available. He served his suspension. So, that's a boost. Um, yeah, I, I can't see us. Well, we'll do, we'll do predictions a bit, but um, mm. everyone knows how terrible our away record is in general. But we haven't won in Swansea since 2010, when Tulupe Farada was man of the match and Dave Flanagan was Osprey's fly half. That's how long ago. <laughs> now, if they, if they were going to move any game to pretend, but you know Osprey's moving games to pretend, yeah. why couldn't they move this one? Because the last time we played Osprey's in pretend, we beat them. So this is That's the game what? that should have been moved to pretend. Exactly. But this is well, it should have they got the wrong game anyway. They should have moved this one, not the card in front to uh pretend. Do you not um, want the extra motivation? The dragons could win the Welsh Shield. <laughs> the Park <laughs> Hotel <laughs> Hubcap could, is within your grasp, Phil. Nah, also, I, deny I don't him, see it. Also, if you could at least deny him a bonus point, then at least give Cardiff a chance on it. Because we'll no, take any one shields over with. No. Don't be relying on this for famous, that's all I say. Um, no. I am going to this game. I will be at the Solus.com stadium uh, for this one, so I am looking forward to it. And I hope there's a good crowd there, because I know Ospreys have pushed this fixture really hard. They're doing family tickets for 50 quid, which I think is really good value. And I'm sure we'll see Lance Bradley all over Twitter pushing and promoting this game. What are you doing on Saturday? Why aren't you at Swansea for this one? And all that kind of stuff. So oh, I hope to get the atmosphere and... Uh, you know, they get a good crowd, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a rush derby. Who knows what can happen? But um, yeah. it probably won't involve a Dragons win, if I'm honest. So, yeah. Okay, Koki. Right. Harley, take us through uh, predictions I then, mate. Talk- I haven't talked about the game yet. Oh, yeah, yeah. I <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Uh, no, wonder, no wonder I was in a good bit. <laughs> go on, then, Bleedy Boy. On you go. Um, The last, like, all, all the games at the Osprey's New Dragons at um, the dot com have all been like massive tray fests. Like they're always really good because they always get some reason. We always get the one in like May 
or like in May where it's sunny, no one really cares. So like the last one I'm pretty sure was like 37, 18 or so. It was Alwyn Jones's last um home game for the Ospreys. So that was a that was a good one. And that was where Jack Walsh needed therapy. Then you had one before that. I believe, which was a trait, which I believe was a Morgan Morris hat trick in that one. So they're always like they're always good games if you're not a Dragons fan, um, because they're, they're, but they are they're really good like family games. And what I like about the Dragons is they don't they're, they're really shit at buying ticket allocations. They don't sit with each other. So like with the, whenever the Scarlets come to town, they always sit in um, or the majority of them sit in the West End. Sort of at the top, um, with, near where the ghost choir used to sit, um, and then but the dragons like were all in front of me and these stand in the in the bottom tier, and they just all like spread themselves out across the across the thing, and then they were dotted around the west end as well. So they, they are always good laugh come down. Um, hopefully the weather holds up because I think this game in the sun is is just a good laugh. Um, I I am somewhat confident that we can take points off dragons here. I do just want the win. I think I'd love a bonus point. But we just hit the win. Um I I resided myself to say that we can't finish in the top eight. People are saying fifty points is might be enough depending on results in the weekend. I personally don't think it is, but when you look at the table we're in eleventh right and that looks quite bad. But the points is fifteen points between us and Sharks. So if Sharks win both their next games with bonus points, it looks worse for the Ospreys. But if we even if we win one, even if we win one of them, we'll basically finish eleventh. We'll basically the bottom of the table, and then the Sharks top their own mini table because the gap has been so big all season. So I, I think it will be a good entertaining game. Um. Uh, you know, there, there's a chance to throw throw the ball around a bit. You know, say goodbye to some. We we're hopefully going to get our leavers list this week. Um, mind you, last season's leavers list still hasn't been published. Like I say we didn't get one last season, season did we? Yeah. <laughs> still waiting to hear what the the contract status of Michael Collins is. Um, <laughs> but, but hope that, that apparently there is plans to do a leavers list. Um. So we'll see. We will see. Okie dokie. Harley, let's um let's do some predictions, mate. You can you can do all say, this. Do you, want, do you want a league update first? Do what? Because actually, Mark, did you did you a solid? Yeah, I know, but he, he like takes it seriously and stuff. So don't expect any of that shit from me. So <laughs> you I'm sorry, me? you have done too many scarlets by ones <laughs> or just or draws to hedge your bets to say you don't take this seriously. You did bad. Yeah, I also did scarlets by forty five for uh, one week as well. So uh, you know, let's 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 keep it real. Yeah, but that so... was when you had an eight percent beer. <laughs> it probably <laughs> was, to be honest. <laughs> um, anyway, just just quickly on the on the league table. So in terms of total points. Basically, if you're closest to prediction, you get four, three for second, two for third, one for, one for fourth. So thanks thanks to Mark. Lee has closed the gap on James from seven to two points, but it's still in, set, still in fourth place on 123. Then we've got James on 125. Big jump up to Jamie on 156. And Jamie is only 13 points behind me, so could overtake Oof. me this if he... If he uh, right? Actually, no, I don't think you can, but, you know, you'll get very close. There's still a chance you can win. Stop teasing, uh, with me yeah. on a very mathematically pleasing 169 points, which I like because it's 13 squared, and I'm a nerd. Mm. Oh. <laughs> I knew it was the right decision to let Harley do this. <laughs> Fucking yes. Up. Right, go on, Harley, you do your predictions first, then, mate. Give the rest right, of so us a very chance. Quick, very, I'm going to just quickly go through mine. Uh, so I've gone Zebra by three, Ospreys by Eight and sharks by twelve. Uh, Lee, do you want me to read yours, or do you want to do yours with and get no, some reasonings? I, uh, yeah, I'll do mine because I like the sound of my own voice. Uh, so I've got, <laughs> I've got Scarlet's by eight, Ospreys by ten, and Cardiff by one. So they're mine. We're doomed for like many fifty, many many point loss, man. <laughs> 
Uh, who's next? Go on, Jamie. You can go first. So it's C plus Scarlet, isn't it, on Friday? Yep. Um, this is a game I would like both teams to lose, to be quite <laughs> honest with you, because this is going to have repercussions <laughs> for the Dragons. No, it will, because mm-hmm. if Zebra win, they leap for the Dragons. We're rock bottom then. And it, we might not recover from that. So, you know, and then on the other hand, if Scarlet's win, but they sort of pulled away from us a little bit, and it looks unlikely then the Dragons could overtake them, and we'll end up bottom rush region again. So, if it's a draw or both teams lose, that'd be great. But I am going to go for Scarlet's win. I think they'll win by six points. Um, both teams what's lose. the next game? Is it Cardiff? <laughs> it's Osprey's Dragons, it, it... but if you want to do the Cardiff game first, you can. Yeah. Yeah, it's a difficult one, isn't it? It's like you guys were saying, what team are they going to put out the Sharks? Now, are they going to rest those players and for that Cardiff European Rampage final or not? Sharks. They are, um, oh. but they have got injury issues, and they particularly a scrum off, as you said. Yeah. Um, Do you remember last season when Cardiff played the Sharks last season? Away in no, South th- Africa. What was the score? <laughs> I can't remember. I could, I could <laughs> genuinely see it being a reverse this year. I tell you what is interesting, mate. Right? I'm not saying this to have a dig, but if Cardiff do lose this, that will be 11 consecutive defeats. That will equal their record because I looked it up on Cardiff's website. So that the record for most consecutive defeats is 11. If they lose against the Sharks, that will equal their record. So um, and then we lose yeah. on Judgment Day, so it will be a new record. See, trend <laughs> set, like making records this season. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go Sharks by six. I think they'll just about edge it, but like I said, it's difficult to know when. We don't know what kind of team Sharks going to put. And then the Welsh Derby Saturday. Um, well, look, I, I do like the Ospreys. Um, and I would like them to make the playoffs. But I would oh, also well, like that's... to beat them as well. <laughs> I would like us to do the double over them as well. No, I would. Um, yeah, I can't see that. Then I think Ospreys would be too powerful for us. Um, we've got to do what we haven't done pretty much all seasons, put in an 80-minute performance. And like I said, our waveform... It's absolutely shocking. So for me, there's only going to be one, one winner. Yeah, I'm going to go Ospreys by 14. And those are my predictions. Okie dokie. Uh, sorry, I've seen a, fant- a fantastic tweet about me. <laughs> Which one the is Ospreys it? Will, the Ospreys won't be playing out my back garden next season or any season after that. Instead, I intend to focus on growing my rhubarb, weed, and patio barbecue. <laughs> It really is all happening at my house. <laughs> oh, that's got me in tears. Fuck, you know. Um, uh, right, Zebra Scarlet. Um, what was the injury front leg like, for Scarlet on the weekend? Uh, Tupelo 2 kind of limped a little bit, but he said it was cramp and he is fit. Uh, other than that, are you expecting for Fita, Craig, and Lousy to be back? Or? Yep. Yep. All three mm, of them. Right. Back. That changes things then. So that zebra by three. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, well, it was oh, zebra by four. Please more, tell me what were you going to predict if they weren't back? It was zebra by eight. <laughs> <laughs> they no, I, uh, one whole try. No, I'm going to go Scar- I'll go Scarlet by six as well. I think that this will be an awful game. I actually think it'd be quite similar to Cardiff's draw out there earlier in the season where you might do some like fancy shit. Costello might do some nice stuff, whatever. And then you'll just let in some stupid tries. Like it, it, it has that vibe all over it, I think. I'm not sure who he's trying to insult here, Harley, me or you. <laughs> no, uh, Harley, Harley was a dream. I, I, they, they did, oh, they did. I mean, we were lucky to get a draw. <laughs> yeah. Because Cardiff scored some mad tries that game and then let in like the softest, like under 14s, I can't be asked, business decision vibes. Um, yeah, that was our, des- our defence for a lot of this season. <laughs> then we go on to Sharks versus Cardiff. I'm going to go Cardiff by 35. Uh, sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, no, you said it now. It's going in. No. Yeah, it's in there. <laughs> it's in there. Uh, <laughs> First answer only. <laughs> no, um, I think. This is, I think Sharks will rest a few. And I, I'm going to say Sharks, I, I will say Sharks by about 12, but it'll be a close, it'll, it'll feel closer. Um, so Sharks by 12. 
and Ospreys versus Dragons. I will go Ospreys by seven. Oh, well, take that. Okay, bonus point. Do some post point, yeah. Yeah, I'll think be nice. good I do. I do like the Dragons really because we're proper That's reasons, nice, yeah. not, like, not like them standalone bastards. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Okay. So let's uh, let's quickly run down anything that we've got coming up on the feeder pods this week. Jamie, we've got anything anywhere close to Brock Harris this week, mate? No, but we are hoping to speak to somebody from Neutradiga RFC to have a chat about them because they've been expelled from the leagues recently. So we want to have a chat to them about their rebuild and the state of the community game. In Wales, find out what the problems are in community rugby. So that could be interesting. And of course, we'll round up the latest news and preview our trip to Swansea. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. Cool. Okay, Carly, am, got any... am I on this? Am I on that pod this week? No, you're not. <laughs> Sauce. <laughs> please, you wanted, uh... sir. Please, sir. Can I be on your podcast this week? <laughs> I'm asking. I'm, <laughs> I'm asking you, you want all the podcasts, maybe another time. I'm asking Dino weeks. to come on my pod. <laughs> Harley, Jamie, what... uh, Jamie guess that. <laughs> Harley, what have you got coming up on Cardiff Central this week, mate? Uh, I imagine a lot of swearing, and Calvin has promised he is prepared a hell of a rant about Cardiff kicking for goal, which is why I didn't touch on it tonight. That would be excellent. Car- Carwin does do a good rant. When he, when he, he goes does... off on one, he proper proper. I know, I'm thinking about one. making it an official segment. <laughs> Because there's not always something he wants to rant about. <laughs> it's because he doesn't wait for the BBC. Yeah. He doesn't anymore. No. That's all in Wales now. Yeah. Mm. James, what, what have you got coming up on Osprey's IRA this week, mate? I was having to kicked up with them bastards. Um, It'll be a good player, won't it? Yes. Uh, no, so we're not planning on talking about the game match, if I'm honest. Um, convenience <laughs> surprisingly um, why is that instead we're, <laughs> um, instead we're going to actually spawned out of mine and Jamie's Twitter interaction earlier about kits we might go back and look at some Dragons Ospreys games and kits as well because both have had some I think both are definitely the more flamboyant two um, you know the, you, you two don't tend to stray far from your regular stuff, so and we were uh, me and Jamie. Uh, you know, us oh, and Gregor, that James. Play. You two mm. just end up copying yeah. each other and having the same kits. Or you see, perfection. Right? Yeah, that is true. <laughs> it's hard to know the two. You can't talk. You had that tequila sunrise kit a couple of years ago. And it made me I liked it. it. I liked exactly. it. I thought, that know, says it, it all. <laughs> it kind of had a little bit of spice about it. Uh, all no, I'm no, saying no. is, nothing is more beautiful image than. Peak. Nothing more was than Jonah Lomu. I can't say that. That's shit. Right, I'm going to say something like, else. like Cardiff season. He's stuttering. Um... <laughs> I don't care. He was in the promos and he looked fantastic in that baby pink jersey with being my baby across the front. Well, I, I did revel in the fact that Philo TNT had gone back to another team that were black and gold um, <laughs> because he looked good in that black and gold kit for the Ospreys. Oh, for them do, you, um, do you remember when Dragons had discount tyres as a sponsor and you looked yes. like a dildo? <laughs> it actually looked like you had a dildo on those shirts. Discount tyres, look it up. That was my, one of my, my favourite ones. My grandfather has quite bad eyesight, so when we, when we had the BT sponsorship, he, he, he was just like, why have we got a disco ball as a sponsorship? You couldn't see like my kit like like five metres away from him. I was like, it's BT, Brendan. Like, come on. <laughs> sort them out. All right. So, on that uh, note. <laughs> yeah. So on um, Scarlet, I've, I've just had a message from the, the boys. Martin can't find the signal. <laughs> really? Martin, that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> Fucking hell. So, uh, so, uh, in Cornwall. Yeah, no, he's, he's in he's in Turkey enemy. this week. So, um, as as a taster, so uh, James, you get to. So I'm going to have to do this now. I was going to do it right on here and do one each, but now I'm going to have to do it on on Scarlet's Fever. So you get to choose this shit dad joke, okay? So tell me when to stop. Fuck. Fucking hell, that, that was shit, James. Right, Jamie, tell me when to stop. Je- oh, fucking hell, boys, come on, Harley. Come on. 
Size kimin Hayır. şansı? Stop. <gülüyor> Hayır. There we go. Stop. Do it there. Right. So shit dad joke. The the worst bar I ever went to was called the Fiddle. It was a violin. <laughs> Fucking up. More of those it's on. Uh... Shit to their fair play. <laughs> That's absolutely. Okay, yeah, but look how many I've got to get through. I, I, I had it for Christmas. I, you, get I, I thought you'd those. give it. I thought you were bowing out. At, bowing out disgracefully of Scouts Fever. I I was, but then the boys have just gone. Oh, well, there's only two of us there, and neither of us want to present. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> I, mean, I'm gonna... there's loads of presenting now. There's like know. 50 million podcasts. You know what he's like, but I'm gonna, <laughs> yes, true. I'm gonna switch my camera off and have my tea while they're, they're talking. That's what I'm gonna do, right? Uh, boys, uh, thank you very much. It was really easy tonight to be depressed and down about last weekend. It would have been really easy to sit there and slag us off, uh, slag our teams off, and all that kind of stuff. But when we finish, I just want to kind of remind people of some stuff so obviously i've been doing my psychology degree and and all of this kind of stuff and i've studied a lot about sports people and sports mentality and, and things like this and there was a a case of a guy in somewhere in australia and i can't remember if he was a an aussie rules player or a rugby union player or, or whatever he was an australian sportsman who um took a lot of what was said about him to heart on social media in newspapers and this that and, and they just he kind of went down that that dive down and down and down and down and dive uh and it ended up in the worst possible place that it, it could end up in so when we are even when it's shit even when it's like we all got pummeled this weekend we all got taken to task it's still just a game it's still just 15 men running around in little boy shorts playing with balls for 80 minutes on a Saturday afternoon or whatever. And sometimes we just need to remember that fact that, you know, nobody's going out on that pitch on a Saturday afternoon or Friday night or whatever to play a shit game. They, they, they're going out and they're doing their best. So when we are putting comments on social media or on pods like this or whatever just remember that there is somebody at the other end of that comment because you do, you do not want to be the person sitting there thinking was that comment that I made on Twitter last week part of the reason why that guy has ended up where he's ended up so you know thank you for tonight gents because it would have been really easy to get down and miserable and depressed and all that kind of stuff and yeah, we didn't. Man. We we kept it going. So two weeks left. Two games left. <laughs> if you don't laugh, you'll cry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. If you it don't really laugh, is. you'll cry. This is what Welsh rugby is going to be like, unfortunately. But yeah. we we've got to look on the bright side, haven't we? Absolutely. So. And on that note, thank you very much for your time again, gents. Pleasure as always. I shall see you next week. We shall do the same thing once again. All the best. Ta-da. Ta-da. listening to the rap podcast we hope you enjoyed listening as much as we enjoyed recording it please do rate us and tell your friends that it really helps us to grow and get better we'll be back next week for more of the same and until then enjoy your rugby sports social podcast network